Hi, everybody. Mac McKinnon here with Flyover Data. All right, so today we're going to talk about how surveyors are using drone data in their workflows. A little side disclaimer before we dive in. We here at Flyover are not surveyors or engineers. We fly drones and we collect data with the latest equipment. And some of that we can provide to licensed professionals so that they can review it, vet it, stamp it, and use it in their workflow. So we are pretty familiar how all that happens and hence this educational video. So uh, with all that said, here we go. Okay, so why would a surveyor wanna use drone data in their workflow? Well, first of all, you get this really high quality visual map. And this map is tagged with X, Y, and Z location on every pixel. And what does that mean? Well, if you've ever driven by on the side of the road, there's a surveyor and they've got a pole and they're looking at a tablet. What they're probably doing is trying to get an exact GPS lock at where that pole meets the ground. That's called a ground shot. So what you're getting with these maps is a computer generated image that has all of these locations tagged to each pixel. So in theory, if everything's done right, if I put my cursor at the end of this lane line, I'm getting a northing and easting and elevation at the lower right-hand corner of my screen. Those can be set to a local coordinate system like state plane or whatever. And if a surveyor were to walk out with their rover pole at this exact same place, they should arrive at the same answer within about a 10th of a foot is kind of the tolerance that we generally shoot for. Um, so, this then can be loaded into Triple Business Center or any of the AutoCAD products um, as a layer. And then that is available for all of the tools that are built into those products. So uh, essentially, you kind of have like millions of ground shots for your entire site, which is pretty powerful stuff. So the other thing that you can get off drone data is a high quality 3D model. So this is created during the computation of that computer generated high quality image. This is actually in the background. What's happening here is software is taking thousands of images. It's finding places that have the same color and the same location. And then it builds this 3D model out of it. Um, but these every little point here should be equivalent to, again, a ground shot. And if you go out with a rover and stick it on the ground, you should get about the same answer. So this whole 3D model can be loaded into design softwares, you know, from Revit, uh, et cetera. Within the cloud viewer, there are tools built in here. So if you want to take just a marker tool through and do a bunch of, you know, quick marks, uh, you can export these into a CSV file um, so that you can take them into other softwares. There are distance tools. So if you're just taking from one point to the next, there are height tools. Uh, so this is basically measuring on the Z. So if you click someplace and then pull, pull away somewhere else, you'll get the variance in the Z between the two points. Let's see, area tool, you can quickly sketch around here and get a square footage number. So, you know, if you're replacing that piece of concrete, you got 30 feet, you got to cut out and replace. Um, elevation profile tool it draws a line basically between two points and then gives you the, the elevation profile along that line. So you get kind of your you know, crown of the road as you go. And um, you can get an idea for how things are from an elevation standpoint. Because there's a 3D model running in the background, the software can easily show how a site is situated with its elevations. So you can see in the lower right-hand corner, the site is higher. And in the upper left-hand corner, the site is lowest. So it's lowest right there, kind of, I guess, in the, in the middle. But the other thing that that does for survey is that it can provide draft contour lines. So it's basically taking that 3D model, splicing it on the side and coming up with your contour. So you can set these to whatever interval you want. Right now, these are at one foot. So each one of these lines represents the way that the site increases or decreases by a one foot elevation change. So this works really well across an open site that the drone can see everything that it's taking pictures of. If we come back into the 3D view and look at these trees, you can see that there's information missing underneath them. So the reason for that is just basically all these pictures that are getting stitched together is just what the pictures can see. So the solution to that is LiDAR. So what we're looking at here is a LiDAR model versus a photogrammetry model. And fundamentally, they're very similar. 
The difference being that um, this is being created with a laser that's mounted on the drone. And as the drone flies, that laser is firing out of the bottom of it like a million times a second. Different rates for different LiDAR units, but that's generally the gist. Um, so every time the laser hits the ground, it records a point. The point has the X, Y, and Z and color. The benefit to LiDAR, the big benefit of LiDAR over photogrammetry is that it bounces. So that laser can make it through the trees and hit the ground. So you're kind of getting ground shots from the laser. So surveyors can have that information when they're creating topography models and contour lines. So I'll show you a little bit of how that works. This is now that same data set uh, loaded into a different software. But the power of this one is that we can tell the software to analyze what is ground and what is not. So everything in blue here has been isolated as trees or other things, and we can just turn that off. Then we can create a tin model, which is basically uh, triangulating a surface on top of the points that are provided from the drone. And then from this, contour lines can be extracted. And there you go. There's your contour line file. This again can be imported into all the design softwares used for civil engineering and yada yada. Uh, this LiDAR unit that we run, it also uses um, PPK, which is a little different than RTK. But the nice thing about that for anybody in the industry is that PPK, we can, if you've got a DOT that publishes their base stations, you can pull the base station from the DOT or reconcile the drone to the DOT network and then your point cloud, when it comes out of the drone, this stuff uh, will automatically be in the same coordinate system as provided by the DOT and should, again, if everything's lining up right, be within about a tenth of a foot. Okay, so just to summarize why this would be a valuable tool in the toolbox of a surveyor, you get back this nice high quality map with all of these pixels that are geotagged. So they can bring this into software like AutoCAD and do line work for sidewalks to create an Alta survey. They can do as building, you know, they can do all, all sorts of things. The other benefit is if somebody goes out to a site and forgot to take a shot of say like this storm grate, that's here. And so you could save a trip out to the site. As it pertains to elevations and topography maps, this is a very quick way to capture a lot of information. And certainly when you do some processing, mix in a little LIDAR, you can get contour line files produced very quickly of a very large site. And it also can be under tree cover. So just a lot of powerful stuff here in the world of engineering and survey. On a closing note, a question I get asked a lot about is data quality. As I mentioned, we try to have our data within about a tenth of a foot. Now, that said, you can go create one of these maps if you buy a drone from Best Buy for about a thousand bucks, and it'll look almost exactly the same. The problem is the data is not the same and you don't really know that until you get way down the rabbit hole of all of the details. So the drone that shot this was about a 20 or $25,000 investment. It was RTK enabled, which makes the photos that it takes much more accurately geolocated and thereby makes the models much more accurate. But even beyond that, our surveyor client tied back to their ground control. They had check shots on the ground and they understood what they were getting. So. What I'm saying is that if you're using a drone for survey related uses, it's really important to be working with the licensed individual in your area, somebody like your local surveyor.